So yesterday we completed cycle one of the six week messy movement foundation series. And I was sitting there thinking about it. I was like, oh my God, like, you know, as I went back through all the footage, I realized that um, over the last seven weeks, I've taught about 45 hours in classes um, for this practice. And it has been truly profound. It has been impactful and it has shifted me in ways that this work always does. Um, but specifically, just having that much time in practice, in the energy of the work and really, you know, committing to embodying, you know, this energy of rest, of pleasure, of radiance, even in the midst of all of the chaos and distress that's happening in the world around us, in our community, and also within our personal lives, just as a family, and um, choosing pleasure even in the midst of choosing pleasure even in the midst of of, you know, times where it feels like very crazy to be thinking about like, what feels good? Like, what does my body need? Like, how can I slow down? But even in those times where it feels like we should be thinking about something else, we should be doing something more important, you know, giving ourselves the opportunity to reroute and remembering that, um, you know, that we deserve that level of care and concern consistently. And not just when we're in a crisis, not just when things are so bad and so terrible that we can't go on any further, but just on a day-to-day -day basis, we deserve that, you know, heightened level of check-in. Work around prioritizing pleasure, you know, is hard. It's not something that, you know, necessarily comes without challenge or without discomfort or without you know fear or guilt like those things are going to come up and then we have to challenge we have to challenge that energy anyway we have to challenge it with a new narrative a new story about what it is that we want for our life and how we want that life to look are we wanting to be drained until we absolutely have nothing left and then providing some level of care for ourselves are we willing to say like hey i am valuable enough that i'm going to slow down before the tank even gets empty i'm going to slow down before i get upset. I'm going to slow down before I'm overwhelmed. I'm going to slow down before my boundaries are too thin, like I, or, or too stretched, or I'm too, you know, I'm too overwhelmed or I'm too afraid, or I can't make a decision or, you know, I'm absolutely burned out. Like we don't have to wait until we're at the bottom of the barrel before we say, I need a break. I actually need to pause. I need to take a step back. I actually need to say no here. I actually need to do something different here. And being able to, you know, come back to that place of knowing that you deserve rest, I feel like is the is is, is such a crucial part to being able to experience pleasure. If our bodies are in a constant state or in a heightened state of anxiety or, you know, running kind of on this like really chaotic fume, right, in order to get from one thing to the other, keeping ourselves busy, keeping ourselves kind of on the go all the time, our bodies can't receive the energy that we're actually calling in. So we're doing all of these, you know, random practices. So we'll do a, a face mask or we'll plan a self-care day or a girl's day or something like that and try to make up for these large gaps of time where we didn't have a practice in place that allowed for us to refuel. And so we really start to rely on those practices in the midst of a crisis when they're really these those tools are most helpful and most important impactful when they're done on a consistent basis with, um, you know, in, in and integrated into our daily life, not as kind of like some one stop shop that we jump to like every three to six months once life has gotten so totally unbearable that we can't take it anymore. So now we might as well go care for ourselves, right? Like it's not, it's about pulling ourselves out of this reactive energy to the things that are happening in our lives and allowing ourselves the opportunity to respond. And it's about learning the lessons, actually letting the lessons of the things that we've been through sink in and giving ourselves an opportunity to really evaluate what our capacity is. Where do we need more care? Where do we need more help or support? Where do we need to kind of, you know, get some additional spiritual or mental health support so that we can operate in a way that allows for us to thrive, right? Um, if we're, you know, not, if we're getting hit with these, you know, obstacles 
in our lives where we're not taking anything from them other than the struggle or the challenge and, you know, pulling our way through them and, you know, doing a little self-care to make ourselves feel better. But we're not actually adjusting our lives to make more space for reflection, to make more space for rest, to make more space for, you know, being in communion and, you know, having that that connection to our higher power, our divine spirit, our, you know, like our energy. Um, I think that we keep getting hit with the lessons over and over until we learn to slow down. And it's it's a lot of times it's, you know, we talk about this in the messy movement class about, you know, if you're on the highway and you know that there's absolutely not enough gas in the car to get to the destination that you need to get to, but then you see someone standing on the side of the road and they also um, and have a gas can <laughs> and you're like, oh, come on, like, where's your destination? And you find out that it's further than where you're actually going, but you're like, oh, come on, I got you. I know I don't have enough for myself, but you know, like, let me make sure you're taken care of first, right? Because that that's the thing that becomes more important. And we've been conditioned to believe that this level of uh, sacrifice is the only option. We've been conditioned to believe that prioritizing other people's needs over our own is the only option. We've been conditioned to believe that if we don't self-sacrifice in the ways in which we've been taught, um, we're obviously not, go- we're not, we're not worthy. <laughs> we're not, you know, we're not doing right by our people. We're not doing right by our families. Um, and, and that can become more overwhelming than just trying to navigate, getting your body to calm down or getting your body into a practice of relaxation and the question becomes if I'm going to feel guilty or you know ashamed or you know frustrated about the fact of all the things that I had to navigate in order to just get here is it worth it to even go through the trouble of trying to even ask for the thing that I know that I need and at the end of the day my answer is always going to be yes um remembering to remember that we are also important in the equation. The vessel that provides the care is just as important as the care that is provided. And whatever that care looks like, whether it's the work that you do, whether it's caring for your family, whether it's looking after your friends, whether it's community work, you have to be fed in the process. So this Messy Movement series has really blown my mind wide open and really going through these practices of what it looks like to create a sense of reverence, a sense of nourishment, a sense of care for your body on a day-to-day basis and allowing yourself to really come back home into that full presence of your sensuality, of goodness, of rest, of radiance. Um, You know, it's, it's, it is necessary and vital work. Those of you who are interested in learning more about the Messy Movement six week series, we do have another cycle coming up in August. So go ahead to the link in my bio to get all the dates and the times for that class and to go ahead and um, submit your registration. If you have any questions about the class, don't hesitate to hit us up at support at the messy movement lab.com. And I look forward to talking with you soon. See you in class. Bye.